Um, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry. Um, please note that we will be starting a little bit late. We are waiting for our, our keynote guest, His Excellency Ken Ofori Atta, Minister of Finance of the Republic of Ghana. And so we should be starting um, our afternoon session at 1.15 exactly. So please bear with us. Thank you.
Um, good afternoon. I'd just like to make another announcement. Um, only the panelists will be will have access to the videos um, and mics. So please note that uh, during the course of the afternoon session. Thank you. We'll be starting in about a minute or so. So please bear with us. Thank you for your patience. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Andy Hodges, Head of Business I can at hear. Network ZTN. It is my great privilege to be your Master of Ceremonies today. Today is a very special day because today we celebrate ACBF's 30th anniversary commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. And of course, today's celebration is brought to you by the African Capacity Building Foundation, ACBF. Of course, today's 30th anniversary celebration is streaming live on YouTube and on Twitter. ACBF would like to welcome and acknowledge here present His Excellency Ken Ofori Atta, Minister of Finance of the Republic of Ghana and Chair of the Board of Governors in ACBF, Honorable Alamine Osmane May, Minister of Economy, Planning and Regional Development from Cameroon and from Kenya. Honorable Ambassador Uka Yatani Kanacho, Cabinet Secretary. Zimbabwe's Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Professor Ntuli Nube. Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Honorable Dr. Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed. And from Mauritania, Honorable Osmane Mamadou Kane, Minister of Economic Affairs. I would also like to acknowledge and welcome here present members of the Executive Board of ACBF, Chair of the Executive Board of ACBF, His Excellency Erastus Mwencha, the Vice Chair, Professor Luca Katselli, and members of the Executive Board. Also, Professor Emmanuel Nagorzi, his Executive Secretary, ACBF, and of course, not forgetting former Executive Secretaries of the Foundation here present. I'd also like to welcome and acknowledge ACBF's development partners here present, the African Union Commission, AUC, African Development Bank, ADB, Afrexim Bank, Baidea, and the Islamic Development Bank, ISDB. ACBF's implementing partners here present, civil society and think tanks, welcome you all. Invited guests, ACB's, ACBF staff and friends of ACBF, all protocols observed. Welcome to this very special day for the foundation commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. And then we ourselves in our office. Before I continue, if I may ask people to please mute their microphones because we can actually hear you, if that's okay. Thank you. Sorry for that, let me, let me proceed. The African Capacity Building Foundation, ACBF, a specialized agency of the African Union for Capacity Development, today celebrates mm. its third anniversary. Mm. Throughout Years, ACBF has spearheaded and coordinated capacity development programs across Africa worth about 1 billion United States dollars. 
The foundation has a proven track record for providing expert knowledge and human resources to facilitate the timely implementation of continental and national development agendas. ACBF is best placed to advise and support African countries, regional economic communities, and institutions on the decisive steps to take to develop the practical skills urgently required for the continent's economic transformation. This afternoon, we look at ACDF's achievements over the last 30 years, and more importantly, the impact of those programs. We also hear testimonials from ACBF's development partners, implementing partners, and the launch of ACBF's new initiatives. To mark this special day, ACBF's 30th anniversary, the inaugural Africa on Capacity Development will be awarded and the ACBF Alumni Network launched. I would now like to invite, without any further ado, Professor Emmanuel Naldozi, he's Executive Secretary of ACBF, to give his introductory remarks. Professor Naldozi, welcome, good afternoon, please proceed. Thank you, thank you very much, Andy, for uh, that uh, very um, uplifting introductory remarks. Um, Your Excellency, Honorable Ken Furiata, Minister of Finance of the Republic of Ghana and the Chair of the Board of Governors of ACBF. Your Excellency, Honorable Alamin Usman May, Minister of Economy, Planning and Regional Development of the Republic of Cameroon and Vice Chair of the Board of Governors of ACBF. Your Excellency, Honorable Ambassador uh, Ukui Atani Kanacho, Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury of the Republic of Kenya and Vice Chair of the Board of Governors of ACBF. Honorable members of the Board of Governors of ACBF, uh, Honor Honorable Erastus Muencha, uh, Chair of the Executive Board of ACBF, distinguished members of the Executive Board of ACBF, um, distinguished uh, my executive secretaries, my predecessors, uh, distinguished uh, government officials from African countries, uh, excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, uh, distinguished partners, distinguished panelists and experts, distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all of you. I'm very, very pleased to welcome you to the 30th anniversary celebrations of the African Capacity Building Foundation, ACPF. Uh, today, the milestones we are celebrating date back to uh, 9 February 1991, when ACBF was established as a collaborative effort by 12 African countries, Botswana, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Democratic Republic of Congo, Ghana, Kenya, Mali, Mauritius, Nigeria, Senegal, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe, and their bilateral and multilateral partners. I call these countries our founding fathers and mothers because they deserve the gratitude of the whole continent for the brilliant idea they came up with 30 years ago. Uh, the group of bilateral partners that supported the establishment of ACBF consisted of governments of uh, Austria, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. While multilateral partners were the African Development Bank, the United Nations Development Program, and the World Bank. So the creation of the foundation was in recognition of the serious uh, capacity deficits in the continent and the need for a common platform and a unique platform for support from our development partners and the necessity of an African ownership of the capacity development process. ACBF was established to build and or strengthen sustainable human and institutional capacity in the core public sector and other areas, other areas of uh, sustainable development with interface with private sector and civil society. So with the vision, of our current vision of Africa capable of achieving its own development, ACBF has steadfastly left its footprints across the continent and lived to its mandate. The foundation has trained more than 50,000 personnel in civil service. Many of you members of Board of Governors have a lot of uh, uh, your experts in your offices who benefited from ACBF capacity building efforts. And many of them hold key positions in ministries of finance, 
ministries of planning, ministries of economy, economic development, and central banks across the continent. So ACBF has created and also supported over 40 think tanks in Africa, whose support to governments have significantly improved evidence-based policy formulation and policy implementation in the, in the various uh, countries. Uh, uh, in, in, in the areas of uh, um, uh, whether we're talking in terms of uh, regional uh, uh, development. So as a go-to place for knowledge and learning on capacity development, ACBF has also conducted hundreds and hundreds of policy research and anal analysis, which have been critical in informing economic management and establishment, establishing benchmarks, you know, um, benchmarks in the forthcoming sessions. ACBF's intervention have contributed significantly to the development of better focused and context specific strategies, which are relevant to Africa's development. ACBF's interventions have also contributed to strengthening Africa's economies and their resilience to shocks, such as the, the ones resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. As the continent's uh, leading capacity development institution, and the Specialized Agency of the African Union for Capacity Development, ACBF is, of course, well placed to recognize that a lot more needs to be done to improve the implement implementation capacity in Africa and to unlock the implementation bot bot bottlenecks uh, in many of our countries and to enhance the capacity of the public accountability to avoid reversals of the good policy developments in the, that have been achieved since the 2000s. For instance, on debt management and to increase the capacity of states to improve the mobilization and adequate utilization of domestic resources to ensure effective implementation of national, regional, and continental strategies and the ability to produce the desirable development outcomes for the African people. Our celebrations today are not about ACBF success per se, but it's about how Africa has successfully carried out, despite the adverse perceptions, uh, its capacity development agenda in pursuit of its economic and social uh, transformation. Yes, a massive effort remains to be made in Africa to match the capacity levels of other continents, but this should not obliterate the effort and indeed the progress that are made every day at the country, regional and continental levels. Today's celebrations demonstrate the high level of prioritization of capacity development by African countries and the recognition of uh, the centrality of capacity development to the development process. We have planned an exciting program for uh, you today, uh, albeit being brief given the, the extraordinary situations that we faced uh, in, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So this will include uh, reminiscences from founding member states, funding partners, implementing partners, and the leadership of ACBF, along with reflections on what was created three, de three decades ago and what ACBF means to many, many of you today. We are truly honored to have our member states, our shareholders with us today. Your number has steadily grown over the years from the initial 12 to 40 countries today and to all African countries considering ACBF status as a specialized agency of the African Union. Their support remains invaluable given their duty to ensure the sustainability of, of the foundation and that of the, and that of the results that they achieved individually with our support. I am pleased to acknowledge the presence of our newer high, highly valued uh, partners, the Afri African Bank, the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, Badea, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Islamic Development Bank, who have all demonstrated their commitment to capacity development in Africa through investing in ACBF. They have been part of the writers of our 30 uh, decade, uh, 30 year um, story uh, of uh, in, in part, impactful capacity building. So I appreciate all of you for making time out of your busy schedules to celebrate with us to reaffirm the relevance and importance of capacity development in Africa and plant the seeds of the next 30 years of successful partnership with ACBA. With these few remarks, I thank you, your excellencies and all our well-wishers and shareholders and stakeholders 
happy 30th anniversary to our boss. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Emmanuel Landos, Executive Secretary ACBF, many thanks for the introductory remarks. And of course, today we're celebrating ACBF's 30th anniversary, commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. And of course, we echo the uh, Executive Secretary's comments there. Obviously, we hope for 30 years, if not more, going forward. It's now my great pleasure to invite His Excellency Erastas Mwensha, who's Chair of the Executive for ACBF, to give us some welcoming remarks. Your Excellency, please proceed. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Honorable Ken Ofolata, Minister of Finance of, of Ghana and also Chairman of the exec, uh, Board of Governors of ACPF. Honorable members of the Board of Governors of ACPF, distinguished members of the executive Board of ACPF, Professor Emmanuel Nandose, representatives of development partners, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Mine is a, a very pleasant and honorable duty of welcoming you to this meeting with a sense of pride, but also to celebrate the founders of ACPF and also those that have continued to strengthen and support, especially from the member states of ACPF, but also our development partners. 30 years ago when ACPF started, it was with a humble beginning. And as we heard from the executive secretary, just about 12 countries that initially were members of ACPF. Today, ACPF posts of membership of more than 40. But that is not really the growth that we celebrate. What we celebrate today is the impact that the ACPF has been able to uh, in, you know, provide to the member states in the areas that the Executive Secretary has aptly highlighted and very well underlined. But also in the fact that ACPF itself has grown to be an institution of maturity in many senses. It has continued to embrace new ideas in its own governance. And it has also been uh, rated as one of the best running institutions in terms of governance. I should remark here that no single incident of audit in the last 30 years, which means we also celebrate the management excellent management that the ACPF has had over the years. Many alumni of ACPF, but also the institutions that have been celebrated, are contributing a lot to the development and the capacity building of our member states. And today, our countries are doing much better because of the foresight of the vision that you as honorable ministers had 30 years ago in establishing SCPF. We still acknowledge the challenges that are ahead of us, especially in the new years, in the new areas of growth that SCPF has yet to develop capacity and support, particularly in the digital world. As we continue to embrace new challenges, but also finding new ways of supporting member states to tackle them as we jointly work together. We should celebrate this with a sense of satisfaction that what has kept us together will continue to bind us together as we move forward in the new phase that we face. In doing so, I want first of all this afternoon to thank those of you honorable ministers that are this sort of three supporting ACPF in all ways to also thank our development partners who have stayed with ACPF from the beginning and continue to provide vital support. But most also those institutions that are providing very invaluable support to our member states. It is not my intention to 
steal the show from the honorable ministers that are here and honorable guests that have come to join us, but simply to welcome you and to thank you for finding time to come and bless this occasion. And we look forward to your insightful statements, which will provide us with the direction that we should be going in the next phase of our development. Thank you and welcome once again and congratulations as we celebrate this worthy anniversary of 30 years. Your Excellency Erastas Mwensha, Chair of the Executive Board, ACDF, many thanks for those welcoming remarks. Of course, today we are celebrating ACBF's 30th anniversary, commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa, and a great day it is. I would now like to welcome, it's my great pleasure to welcome His Excellency Ken Otori Atta, who's Minister of Finance from the Republic of Ghana and Chair of the Board of Governors of ACDF. Minister, welcome, and please proceed with the opening remarks. Right. Thank you so, so very much um, for this, and it's really um, a great celebration and a testament um, to um, our previous uh, ministers and governors um, who came up with this idea and saw it through. So honorable ministers and dear colleagues, governors of ACBF from the 42 African member states, the African Union, and the African Development Bank, the United Nations um, Development Program, and the World Bank. Distinguished partners, Africa Exim Bank, Badia, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, the Honorable Chair, Erastus Mwenchi, thank you very much for your diligent work, and members of the Executive Board of ACBF, and the Executive Secretary, our indefatigable Professor, Dozi, um, distinguished guests, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it, it is my unqualified privilege um, to, to welcome you um, to the 30th anniversary celebration of ACPF. Now, this is a significant milestone, not just in the number of years since inception, 1991, but three decades of well-coordinated capacity development interventions on the continent. Excellencies, amid a pandemic that has pushed our economies into contraction to 2.1% and taking 113 million full-time jobs from our youthful population, there's a heightened need to underpin our build back efforts with training and capacity building to A, realize the SDGs on poverty reduction, lay the foundation for sustainable growth reducing inequalities and fundamentally address the daunting technical skills gap um, on our continent. And with the incidence of the pandemic, um, how to ensure um, that Africa's place going forward um, is inculcated in the commons that we are fighting for. Capacity building is a crucial prerequisite to building a forward better beyond COVID-19. As we commemorate the 30th year of our institution, let us not lose sight of our institution's critical role on the continent. Until we condition ourselves to accept capacity building and development management, it's our shared responsibility and imperative, we'll be unable to build the requisite skills and capacity in Africa to strengthen the capabilities of public sector institutions, confront operational loopholes and avert leakages, which according to the Stolen Asset Recovery Initiative, cause between 20 to $30 billion stolen annually by corrupt public officials, not to count, of course, the 70 billion that we lose through illicit financial flows. Improve accountability and oversight across the continent by enhancing the skills and competences of our lawmakers and parliamentarians, deploy robust and agile statistical systems to help meet the SDGs through the generation and use of timely and relevant data 
and critically build the capacity of member countries and position them to take advantage of the AFCFTA. Through the AFCFTA alone, we are a step closer to yielding economic benefits, such as 16.1 billion in welfare gains, additional GDP growth of one to 3%, employment growth of at least 1.2%, intra-Africa trade growth of 33%, and a 50% decline in Africa's trade deficit. As you know, a 1% increase in world trade with Africa will literally yield another 70 billion to Africa's coffers. The good news is that with 30 years of experience, our institution has reached the age of maturity and is more than ever ready to support Africa's development efforts. Starting with building the necessary capacities for our recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Thus, our ACBF remains one of the critical pillars to build an Africa capable of achieving its development objectives. ACBF has strengthened the capabilities of more than 200 public sector and regional institutions in Africa and created platforms for inclusive policy engagement. It has empowered more than 50,000 senior public sector officials and managers through the successful partnership it built with some 90 higher education institutions. Yet more has to be done. Despite the challenges we have faced in our member countries since our last meeting, our Secretariat has continued implementing plan activities with admirable determination. I'm also pleased to report that some member states have made a concerted effort to honor their pledges. Given the strategic role our institution plays, the financial support by member states is critical in ensuring the long-term sustainability of the foundation. And I commend the leadership and commitment demonstrated by our countries in redeeming our pledges to the strategic plan 2017 to 2020. I also like to offer congratulations to the government of Zimbabwe and for hosting us um, for 30 years and the government of Ghana and what, what it's doing um, for ACBF with its offices here. I am encouraged by the support offered to our foundation by our multilateral partners, AFDB, UNDP, BADIA, and the World Bank and institutions such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In times of crisis, you pay particular attention to those who join hands to overcome adversity in the hope of a better shared future. So again, thank you for your support to the foundation. I challenge you to continue supporting us as we move towards achieving our particular purpose of creating an Africa capable of achieving its own development. Africa needs ACBF more than ever to enable effective delivery of continental development priorities, skilled people and strong institutions will be the cornerstone of Africa's recovery. Again, the numbers are in our favor, but it depends on how we prepare that dividend. By 2050, we'll be 20% of the world's population. According to the World Economic Forum in 2050, also two out of every five children will be born on the African continent. We'll have about 850 million people as the largest um, congregation of youth uh, in the world, we have to invest in their development. We cannot allow the next generation to meet the same development challenges we face through our economic history. Africa uh, has a financing gap, which IMF and AFDB estimates put at some $425 billion. Sub-Sahara Africa, about $245 billion within the next three years to return to pre-COVID-19 growth levels. Given the estimated additional financing required, Africa's recent IMF SDI allocation of some 33 billion is inadequate to kickstart any broad-based and meaningful recovery. But we must fight to get more resources. This is why Africa is advocating for a prudent and transparent rechanneling of at least 25 to 35% of SDRs. 100 billion of which should be dedicated to Africa 
to support vaccine access, including regional vaccines and manufacturing, fund the IMS Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust of the IMF, serving all low-income countries, the new resilience and sustainability trust, setting up an Africa stability mechanism to recapitalize regional and multilateral development banks and leverage private development financing through capital markets. But this is going to require extensive lobbying and the capacity of ACBF to help guide us as we negotiate with the IMF is going to be very critical. I urge the ACBF to build the requisite skills and capacity to support the AU's advocacy, finance ministers and governors for this USD 100 billion SDR reallocation and the reform of the global financial architecture which seems incapable of addressing pandemics of this nature. Therefore, I hope our celebrations are introspective, be guided by the exigencies of the times, how we can work together to vaccinate some 70% of our population and take the necessary steps to realize Africa's development potential. It is really my distinct and pleasure um, to open the 30th anniversary celebrations of bringing Africa beyond aid. And as Mandela Sills said, sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great. You can be that great generation. Let your greatness blossom. Let us all hold up ACBF so that Africa will go beyond aid. Many happy returns to the 30th birthday of ACBF. Congratulations to all of you, all of us. Thank you, and may God bless us as we go forth of courage, strength, and love. God bless you. Thank you. Your Excellency Ken. Ofori Atta, Minister of Finance in the Republic of Ghana and Chair of the Board of Governors ACBF. Many thanks for that inspirational, motivating, welcome opening remarks. It's interesting because, of course, so the Minister talked about where ACBF has done and the good work it's done in the past, but also the work still to be done going forward, hopefully over the next 30 years and beyond, not just for ACBF in terms of capacity building, but also for Africa and all the Africa member states to band together to get what they require and what they to work together as one continent so that we can move our people forward. Thank you so much for that, uh, Honorable Minister, Minister of Finance and Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Ken Ofori Atta, and Chair of the Board of Governors, ACBF. Of course, today we're celebrating. It's a celebration, day of celebration, ACBF's 30th anniversary, commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. And of course, we are live streaming on YouTube and Twitter. So if you do miss today, you can always catch us later. But I'd like to really thank our three uh, speakers, Professor Emmanuel Andorzi, His Excellency Erastas Mwencha, Chair of the Executive Board of ACBF, and of course, Professor Andorzi, Executive Secretary of, of ACBF, and of course, the Minister from the Republic of Ghana, Finance Minister, His Excellency Ken Ofori Atta, for those inspirational words. And I believe it will give us impetus to move forward over the next 30 years. They always say that as much as uh, we can talk about ACBF's achievements, sometimes it's better to see it in video form. So right now we'd like to play you a video which highlights ACBF's achievements and its impacts. Before the year 2016, the Public Service Institute of Nigeria, PSIN, had always operated on a normal scale of building and developing strategic capacities in the public service. Over time, since its inception, the Institute, through its administrator, Dr. Abiganyu Obatoimbo, had always believed that they could do more if given the right support, both physically and financially. The African Capacity Building Foundation, an African Union specialized agency, for capacity development in 2016 came knocking on the doors of the PSIN with the sole aim of supporting capacity development in Nigeria. Mrs. Ngozi Ogumike is the head of partnership PSIN and she answered the door. 
It started uh, with a letter inviting us to make a presentation at uh, a Villa Melinda Gates Foundation event. And uh, the then administrator went and did the presentation. After that, we got an uh, email from African Capacity Building Foundation requesting for a visit. And uh, when they came, they now told us what they, they are here for. And uh, they guided us and got a consultant that helped us to map out our need areas. Three core project areas, ranging from assets to institutional training and capacity building, were drawn up into 19 places for execution. Today, 18 out of the 19 have been fully executed and the Public Service Institute works with its head high as a force to reckon with among its peers. Mrs. Abiodun Binuyo is the Acting Director, Entrepreneurship and Commercial Orientation Department in the Institute and she says the staff capacity building training has really impacted positively in the discharge of her duties. It was actually a new area for me because from where I'm coming from as a statistician, I've never been exposed to such. So I quite well learned a lot from that, as well as the monitoring and evaluation architecture for this establishment, the institute. So we we're taking through how to track the performance of the institute at the corporate level, at the departmental level, as well as the individual level. Through uh, the capacity building uh, training that uh, I participated in, it has really improved my, it has really improved on my digital marketing, how I can do better on my job. It has improved on my public relations. It has widened my scope. The fully equipped computer-based center of the PSIN has no doubt improved the quality of conducting research, promotion examinations, as well as training of public servants on good governance, policy reforms and administrations. Since uh, the establishment of this center, we've actually conducted a lot of uh, CBT exams. Presently, we are the flagship of the head of civil service of the Federation and all thanks to ACBF. The library has benefited from, from it. We had a training courtesy of uh, ACBF, of the staff, and um, this uh, has generated a lot of um, interest from the institute uh, clients who come in to use our facilities on a regular basis for research, for policy making, and as well for their career development. There is no doubt that the PSIN can be said to have hit its mark through the support and contributions of the African Capacity Development Foundation. But nevertheless, they are yet to cross the Rubicon. This is why the head of partnership of PSIN, Mrs. Ngozi Ogumike, believes that the ACBF still has more to offer. We are now their babies. You don't go grow a child and uh, abandon the child along the line. So we're also looking forward to do more collaborations with them and also for them to keep on uh, hand-holding us. It's, it's never, uh, a child is never too old to be hand-held by the person leading him or her. As I said, you know, we can speak about the 30th anniversary of ACBF and commemorating, of course, 30 years of capacity building in Africa, but to hear the impact of ACBF programs on the people of Africa is just inspiring. And I'd like to then, you know, personally also congratulate ACBF and its programs over the last 30 years, and also the programs and people that will help going forward. So congratulations once again. Um, 
Now we do a presentation of ACBF's achievements and impacts. This will be done by Rakiri Kone. He is the, um, oh, sorry, excuse me. Um, oh, we now move to uh, the partner testimonials, my, my apologies. Um, I would like to, with a bit of a change in the program, um, I would like to ask uh, Honorable Minister Professor Ntuli Ngube, he's Zimbabwe's Minister of Political and Economic Development, to, uh, to start his, to give his opening remarks first, and then we'll move on with the rest of the program. Honorable Minister Ngube, please proceed. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, let me recognize the Honorable Chair for the ACBF Board of Governors, uh, Minister Ken Oforiata, my friend, and Minister of Finance for Ghana. Uh, Honorable Governors here present, Excellencies, members of the Dipl Diplomatic Corps here present, distinguished development partners, mem uh, Chair and members of the ACBF Executive Board, the Executive Secretary for AC ACBF, and the ACBF officials here present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. And this is afternoon for me on my end. It is a great pleasure for Zimbabwe to be present on this occasion where we are celebrating ACBF's 30th anniversary as one of the representatives of the countries that took this institution from its baptismal stage of France 30 years ago uh, and the country that hosts its headquarters. It is a pleasant duty for Zimbabwe to be present here today. 30 years ago, uh, 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 wherever one looked at in, in, in Africa, uh, the state of capacity building was alarming in the large majority of African countries, uh, uh, basically treating the wounds of the famous structural adjustment programs. While admitting that a lot uh, still needs to be done, we have to recognize that the picture is significantly different today with most African countries handling much uh, uh, better uh, their policymaking processes, their institution building, and the long-term planning processes. We can say without any hesitation that ACBF has made a, a notable contribution to the strengthening and resilience of the African economies. Honorable governors, distinguished partners, ladies and gentlemen, throughout the past 30 years, Zimbabwe's commitment to capacity development has remained strong. Zimbabwe volunteered to host the headquarters of ACBF because the country was as confident that it was confident that as it is today, that it could do this successfully, and we've supported AAC, ACBF to the hilt. Today, Zimbabwe can confidently say that ACBF's performance over the past 30 years has been to the country's uh, expectation, having achieved some significant results and, and raised um, uh, to the uh, status of a specialized agency of the African Union. Uh, honorable colleagues, Zimbabwe, like other the other 44 African countries uh, has benefited from the support of ACBF. Among several notable contributions, ACBF supported the creation and, and continues to support the operations of the Zimbabwe Economic Policy Analysis and Research Unit, otherwise known as ZIPARO, which does excellent work. This think, work has, uh, think tank rather, has been uh, instrumental in conducting strategic studies and provided policy advice that has led to the formulation of Zimbabwe's mining policy. Various other studies produced by Zipar have enabled government to set up strategies in areas of tourism and competitiveness. The Women's University in Africa, which is based here in Harare, is another success story of ACBF. ACBF's timely and relevant support was instrumental in keeping the donors of the university when it faced serious challenges around staff retention, networking with other institutions, and access to information and communication technology. ACBF support played a key role in attracting the, in, uh, the uh, recognition and financial support of other stakeholders. The, uh, the Women University of Africa is now developed into a center of excellence, and thanks to the flexibility of these demand-driven courses, which have enhanced uh, 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 which have been enhanced rather with the introduction of evening, weekend and holiday block classes, as well as open distance learning uh, modules. Uh, and thanks to ACBF for all of this. Uh, honorable governors and uh, distinguished partners, ladies and gentlemen, Zimbabwe has remained one of the leading African contributors to the foundation's operations and intends to continue this way. We all agree, I believe, that ACBF has made a significant contribution 
to a, a, a development uh, effort. I want to believe that we, member states and development partners, are all in for another 30 years of successful partnership with the foundation. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all of us a memorable celebration. Thank you, ACPF. Thank you all. Zimbabwe's Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Professor Antulin Mube, many thanks for those, uh, for those motivating remarks and of course highlighting how ACBF has impacted here where we are in Zimbabwe. In fact, I can actually say Professor Mube today is probably our co-host as we are based here in Zimbabwe coming to you, celebrating ACBF's 30th anniversary, commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. Now, I just, we just thought that, again, I, I do apologize for changing the program. However, we thought we'd get a testimonial from Professor Kevin Chika Urama, FAAS, he's acting chief economist, vice president for the Economic Governance and Knowledge Management Complex and senior director, African Development Institute at the African Development Bank Group. Professor Urama, um, please proceed with your testimonial. Thank you. Thank you very much, moderator. Honorable Minister Ken Oforiata, Minister uh, for our Finance for Ghana and the Chair of the Board of Governors of the Africa Capacity Building Foundation. Honorable Governors, distinguished partners, distinguished guests, um, uh, all protocols observed. On behalf of the President of, uh, of the African Development Bank Group, Dr. Kim Wume Adeshina, who is not able to be with us uh, today for uh, other pressing engagements, I would like to uh, convey the greetings, his greetings and the congratulations from the African Development Bank Group uh, to the ACBF on its 30th anniversary. If this was a marriage, we would be celebrating ACBF's Pearl anniversary. And for me, it is more of that for Africa because ACBF has been an anchor for African development, strengthening capacity, structural transformation, institutional capacity, skills development, and all the testimonials that we have been hearing from the beneficiaries of ACBF in the past 30 years. Honorable Chair, Honorable Governors, distinguished partners. As you are aware, the African Development Bank Group has been one of the founding partners of the African Capacity Building Foundation because of the value we place on institutional capacity, individual capacity, and organizational capacity for building um, um, you know, sustain capacity for sustainable and inclusive development in Africa. The bank, since 1973, has been scaling up its efforts to build capacity in this important area of uh, African development, and we see ACBF as a key partner institution to be able to move that forward for the continent. In 1973, uh, the bank established the African Development Institute, which um, is one of my key roles now to help the Institute to help Africa in the area of capacity. And right from then, uh, the establishment of ACBF, ACBF have remained an anchor institution with whom the ADI and the African Development Bank delivers on capacity development in Africa. The relationship has gone from an institution that the bank helped to establish to an institution that is helping the bank to implement programs in Africa. And that is how ACBF has grown in its relevance, its importance, and its capacity. I always think of ACBF as one African institution we should be proud of because it has built capacity within in order to build capacity. We have also remained as a key member of the board of the ACBF, watching carefully the key aspects of governance, accountability, and prudence, which is normally the area that many donors and partners look for in Africa. And I can testify that all these three years, the African Development Bank has had no issues with regard to the governance quality and the continued commitment to good corporate governance, transparency, and accountability within the ACBF executive leadership, and also in ACBF's efforts to try and help build that across the continent. You heard the testimony from the executive secretary with regard to 
the uh, think tanks that ACBF has helped establish, most of which have become key in terms of leading uh, development and capacity development in many African countries. On that, I would like to say a very big congratulations to the leadership of ACBF, because this is a key area of capacity and development that Africa is always faulted at. And ACBF is leading in terms of making that work for the continent. On the funding level, we have continued to be committed to the ACBF. And I have to say the African Development Bank, we have invested over 50 billion, uh, 50 million, I wish it was billion, and that's why I'm saying billion. Over 50 million uh, uh, dollars uh, disbursed to the ACBF and with many other programs that we're wanting to work with ACBF over, this, uh, over these 30 years and in the coming years. For me, that sounds much, but it's not large enough. And the same way other development partners have also invested hugely I want to thank the World Bank. I want to thank Gates Foundation and all the other agencies that have been investing in ACBF. I would like to say investing in capacity development is investing in development. So let us all rally to do more in this area. And I say this because this is an area sitting on the board of ACBF that I have seen that ACBF has built capacity to build capacity but the financial enablement to allow it to be able to operate at the level that it could in order to help in structural transformation on the continent needs to be improved. On the technical level, the ACBF have grown, like I've mentioned, from being an agency that the bank gives resources to implement programs to also helping us to implement programs, including in Zimbabwe. And I would like to see that scaled up a lot more so that ACBF will help to transmit the capacity it has built to be able to move this forward. One would ask, what's the bank doing about this? And to address this capacity, uh, you know, resource mobilization capacity for African institutions, including ACBF, we have worked with ACBF and African institutions to start an initiative of establishing a knowledge and capacity development trust fund for Africa. I'm very pleased to note that the board of the African Development Bank approved in July the capacity development strategy for, our, for, for of the bank for the next five years, within which one key program is the KCDTF. As we work towards this, I would like to see a ACBF uh, strongly um, supporting and strongly working towards making this work for Africa because it will help to address the financing uh, challenges that many of the African institutions, including ACBF, have been facing. The litany of what ACBF has done for Africa are many, and time will not allow me to go through all of them. I would like just to say that in the coming 30 years, when we ce celebrate the 60 years anniversary, I would, I would love to see an ACBF that has been fully enabled to be able to deliver what it has proven the capacity to deliver, which have already passed is contributing up to 50% of wealth creation in many countries. The United States of America, intellectual property constitutes over 48.2% of, of wealth creation in that country. I would like to uh, call on all the partners to work with ACBF to ensure that we can, encap we can mobilize resources to help ACBF do what it has demonstrated in the past 30 years that it can do very well which is build capacity for inclusive, sustainable, and resilient economic growth and development and sustainable development in Africa. Because without it, we will not be able to achieve the sustainable development goals and agenda 2063. Thank you. Professor Kevin Chika Rama, thank you for that testimonial, very inspiring words and also food for thought about things that need to be done. Of course, Professor Obama is fast acting chief econo economist, vice president for the economic governance and knowledge management complex and senior director, African Development Institute, African Development Bank Group. Now, please, I noticed that there are lots of comments coming through. Hopefully, towards the end of the show, I'll try and read some of them out. Um, and really thank you for your congratulatory um, comments. 
and your words to ACBF. And as I said, I will read them out to us. Today we are celebrating ACBF's 30th anniversary, commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. And it's definitely a day for celebration. But as uh, Professor Nandosi said, the day for celebration, bearing in mind that the work is still to be done and 30 years more will be here. We'll meet again in 30 years, I hope. Praise God. I'd now like to uh, call upon uh, Dr. Christian Abu Lehaf from Afrexim Bank to give us some, some words. Uh, Dr. Lehaf, please proceed. Uh, thank, you, thank you, moderator, uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, honorable chair, honorable governors, hon hi honorable high dignitaries, valued participants and partners. It really gives me a great pleasure just to represent Afrexim Bank and to congratulate you on behalf of the president uh, who, is, who has tried to, to make it today, but he couldn't because of so many commitments he has and prior commitments, but he is really congratulating uh, ACBF for the achievement done through all the 30 years. And uh, we really wish ACBF uh, continuous uh, success and, and 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 growth in this success. I really uh, am happy to be here as a witness of of and give some testimonial of of uh, the achievement of SCBF, especially when it comes uh, in relation to the partnership with Afrexim Bank. Actually, uh, let me say that this is one of the success story Afrexim Bank has. And when we started, you know, to take, you know, our partnership to make sure that we are implementing all the agreed areas and collaboration with our partners, we have given ACBF as an example, as a success story. We have uh, really, we started really uh, this official uh, collaboration with ECBF. It goes back to the year 2017 when we started like uh, just designing a partnership in MOU together where we have, uh, you know, put all together all the activities we want to do, the areas of collaboration with an activity milestone. And then this was followed by pledge agreements. It was really, we and we were monitoring really closely and we saw how ACBF really went from theory to implementation, from uh, theory in terms of capacity building, not only designing uh, training courses, you know, trying to enhance the capacity of, of the African continent in terms for trade and investment in the continent. No, they went on implementing this. We have seen how, how keen they were and how the efforts, you know, conducted and led by uh, Professor Ndozi at this time. And, and since then we have been really moving successfully and then growing actually the activities together. So I'm really witness of this uh, very big achievement that happened uh, you know, through ACBF and I'm proud that we have such an entity in Africa that take, uh, takes care of, about, you know, of, of the capacity building in the African continent. What I also want to, to say about this one, I, I use this occasion to call on all, uh, all the partners to come together to assist ACBF to do its mission, accomplish its mission, because really this is a, a real credible entity that we can trust and we can really put our money here because we know that they will be delivering. So, so I call on all the participants, all the partners, all the DFIs, all even the private sector, uh, uh, anyone who can really assist ACBF in its mission. So it, it's, it's really hard. And, and what I want to give some examples of, of the good achievements we have. We have achieved, you know, with the think tank, we were able to do joint research. We were even, even uh, able to develop a trade finance course and then master program. So, and, and so many other things, activities we have done with such an institution. So I really congratulate you in your 30th anniversary. I, I wish if I can witness uh, the next 30 years, but uh, I'm sure that uh, with the leadership uh, ACBF has, they will continue from progress to progress with the support of all the partners. So I, uh, once again, I congratulate you and I wish you all the best. I will not you know, uh, provide a very long speech. So I leave the room for other testimonials because I'm sure other partners, they have success stories to tell. Thank you very much. And uh, looking forward for more and more successes. Thank you. Dr. Christian Abuleha, thank you for that uh, incredibly, again, motivating testimonial. And I just want to quote something that uh, Dr. Lahaf said. She said she called on all partners and stakeholders to support ACBF because it's an entity that we can all trust. Thank you so much, Dr. Lahaf. 
But of course, those words do resound well today as we're celebrating ACBF's 30th anniversary, commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. Um, another testimonial, we now welcome a representative from the Islamic Development Bank, ISDB, Dr. Sameh Hussein, who will, uh, who will also give us uh, his take on today's celebrations. Uh, Dr. Hussein, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Very, very glad to be with all of you. Um, in fact, uh, let me start by conveying uh, uh, the warm regards from the Vice President of the Islamic Development Bank, Dr. Mansour Muftar, to, to, to all of you. And um, on, on his behalf, I would like to say that uh, we uh, have been uh, witnessing uh, two core competencies uh, of, uh, of uh, ACBF uh, while uh, working with them. They have uh, structured methodology and uh, very uh, well thought of tools for capacity development and the capacity, uh, uh, I mean, assessment. And uh, the second core competency is their access to wide network, uh, wide and diversified network of uh, important resource persons, as well as uh, think tanks. So in our collaboration with, uh, with SBF, we saw how they can deploy these uh, core competencies that the methodology plus the, the the network of think tanks, uh, think tanks and resource persons in order to produce uh, important knowledge products and the bold important uh, uh, policy policy uh, policy briefs. Uh, we worked with uh, SCPF on uh, on important knowledge products in important uh, uh, publications, and I think we were uh, very very happy with the results results that that will be beneficial to uh, <clears throat> the uh, the African countries uh, in general. Uh, SBF is working on on an area which is strategically important to all I, to all the member countries to all African countries. The capacity development it's the key for uh, uh, implementing successful successful projects as well as sustaining the output uh, of any project. Uh, that, that's why uh, the important uh, in addition to the normal importance of capacity development, I think in uh, we are. Uh, living in 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 the COVID nineteen or post COVID nineteen uh, era, that's why <clears throat> capacity development is is a key for uh, reforming the health sector, for uh, re restoring the health of uh, uh, other economic uh, uh, sectors. Uh, that's why in in the bank we we fully understand the importance uh, of what uh, ACBF uh, is doing. We will be very very pleased to uh, continue collaboration uh, with them uh, in in the in the upcoming years. Congratulations, uh, 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 you did a wonderful job and uh, 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 we look for, uh, I mean, uh, more things and uh, I mean, uh, deeper successes in the upcoming years. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Madrid. Dr. Samir Hussein, of course, a representative from Islamic Development Bank, ISDB. Thank you so much. Uh, I like that. We, we look for more successes in the years to come as, of course, today we celebrate 30 years, 30th anniversary of ACBF, and it's definitely a day to celebrate. Um, I don't have a voice, so I can't sing happy birthday, but uh, congratulations to ACBF and Dr. Sama Hussein, thank you for that testimonial and those inspiring words. Um, I'd now like to call upon uh, uh, Mr. Fabian Mezoho, he's program manager of Parsi MPS Gabon, based in Gabon. Um, Fabian, please, uh, please proceed. You're one of the implementing partners. Please go ahead. With your testimonial. Mr. Inde Mezo, are you there? Well, while we wait to connect with Mr. Inde Mezo, I thought that it may be a good opportunity to read, to read some of the comments. Um, that, that some that you have posted. Um, uh, there's one here, congratulations to the executive secretary and members of the ACBF family on your 30th anniversary. Your contribution to the development of Africa's human and institutional capacity is undeniable. I wish you many more years of invaluable contribution to the continent. Best wishes from Paul or Kolo in Abuja. And this one here as well, congratulations to ACB, ACBF for 30 years of impact. It is today a mature organization that continues to deliver value to African decision makers in finance and critical sectoral policies. I wish the organization and its valuable stakeholders more years of impact ahead. That's from Dr. Fanny Lottier. Okay, now then, um, while we try and get uh, Mr. Fabian Indemizoho on the line, um, I would like to, oh, I think he's, he's now with us. Um, 
Uh, Mr. Enzoro, of course, he is the um, in the Mezoho. He's program manager of Parsi NPS Gabon. Uh, Fabian, please proceed. We still appear to be having some connection issues there, but uh, we will get back to uh, Mr. Ende Um, I'd like to now um, introduce or welcome, um, oh, Fabian, can, can you hear me? Fabian, I think you may be muted. No, he's not. No, he's not. Okay, all right, well, uh, while we try and sort out the sound. Vous nous attendez, Fabien, vous pouvez uh, uh, continuer, si vous, si vous, si vous voulez. Allez-y. OK, we appear to be having some sound problems there. While we work that out, um, let me bring um, in Miss, Miss Eugenia Kayetesi. She's Executive Director, IPA Rwanda. Uh, Miss Kayetesi, please, uh, please proceed with your uh, in, in implementing partner testimonial. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you so much, moderator. Good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations to SCBF, ES, and the uh, entire staff. And I'm happy to be here and to give uh, my testimony about SCBF. We are all glad that we're turning 30 years of existence as an institution. Uh, like I've told you, um, the executive director of IPARANDA and the testimony I'm giving is about the, the support that we, we obtained so far from the African Capacity Building Foundation, which has actually led to the sustainability of uh, IPARANDA as a part today. Uh, IPARANDA's partnership with SCBF uh, started at a very critical moment of need for capacity in Rwanda during the post war economic recovery period. Uh, during this period, Rwanda was on an, an upward trajectory in terms of economic growth and development. However, uh, we still had critical gaps in capacity of human resource in terms of the critical skills needed, uh, especially in the area of research and evidence that was required to guide the different policies and reforms that were taking place in Rwanda mm -hmm. after the war. IPO Rwanda started its operations in 2008 with a seed funding from the government of Rwanda. Uh, and during its inception and takeoff, SCBF uh, came on board in a, at a critical time when we needed funding to support the co-funding. And this funding came to mainly support the three areas of uh, strengthening capacity for research, enhancing uh, capacity for public policy dialogue and uh, the human resource development. SCBF support further supported salaries of senior research staff and the senior management at IPAR after the government funding seed was withdrawn in 2011. In addition, SCBF provided funding to cover organization and operational costs, which provided firm foundation for IPAR Rwanda as a think tank to today. Uh, by providing the co-funding that enabled IPA higher uh, support and uh, skilled and experienced staff, including the director of research, executive directors and senior researchers, IPA's sustainability in terms of attracting further funding from commission projects and completing them was enhanced. Uh, this was mainly due to the fact that highly skilled research and managerial staff were able to pass on the skills to the local staff, uh, which we are still actually depending on to today. Uh, in addition, IPARS, I mean, SCBF's funding helped training activities for both research and management at IPAR. Uh, these training workshops that we provided, provided platforms for not only cross-country learning between different think tanks in Africa, as we've heard from other speakers, but also networking opportunities between think tanks across Africa. And this raised the visibility of IPAR as an institution. This has enabled research, 
collaboration on regional and at the continental level. And the IPA is now capable of actually handling projects at a region and even at a continental level. So SCBF has provided opportunities for uh, conducting commissioned research, as I mentioned, and uh, we are currently actually supporting uh, and informing policy development in the country. So uh, as I end and as I conclude, I must congratulate SCBF and thank them for actually supporting the sustainability of IPA Rwanda, uh, which is strong and able to mobilize its own resources and stand firm actually without the co-funding that we used to get. Thank you very much, SCBF, for the support. Congratulations upon your 30th anniversary. And uh, we look, I wish you more as we move forward. Thank you. Um, Ms. Eugenia Kayetesi, Executive Director, IPA Rwanda. Thank you very much for those uh, motivating testimonial words. And of course, as, as, uh, as um, Ms. Eugenia said, IPA is going from strength to strength, <clears throat> obviously on so some of the support given by ACPF. Of course, today we're celebrating 30th anniversary of ACBF commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. And we are streaming live on YouTube and on Twitter. Um, I'll now we will get back to uh, hopefully later Fabian in the Mizoho. But first, I'd like to call on Dr. Sepelai Kabata, Technical Advisor to Director General Badia. Dr. Kabata? Dr. Kabata, are you there? All right, again, I think we're having a bit of network challenges, but let me, uh, let me see if we can't uh, uh, link up with uh, Mr. Fabian in the Mezoho, Program Manager, Parsi, MPS Gabon. Um, Fabian, I hope you can hear me and you can, uh, you can, we can hear you, I hope. Please, please go ahead. Je vous entends parfaitement. Yeah, please go ahead. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Oui, allez-y, Monsieur. Vous avez la parole, s'il vous plaît. Allez-y. On vous entend très bien. D'accord. Je vais être déjà merci, merci beaucoup et félicitations pour cet anniversaire. Le succès est un des pas des actions des ACDF au niveau du Gabon et principalement au niveau de notre organisation, euh, je voudrais rappeler très rapidement que grâce au soutien et à l'appui de l'ACDF, euh, la loi de antique tabac du Gabon a été promulguée, le protocole, euh, du pro le, le, la ratification du protocole contre le commerce illicite des produits du tabac a été fait, Euh, les décrets d'application de la loi ont été faits. La mise en place d'une taxe du tabac a été effectuée. Les, le nombre d'organisations de la société civile en matière de lutte anti-tabac est passé de 2 à 4. Une équipe de surveillance, un groupe de travail multisectoriel chargé de la surveillance des activités de l'industrie a été mise en place. Sur le plan interne, en termes d'acquis, nous avons que MPS, grâce au soutien constant et permanent de SCPF, a pouvoir exercer des ici au Gabon, grâce à l'obtention du récépissé définitif de notre organisation. Grâce au fonds SCPF, grâce au soutien technique de SCPF, Aujourd'hui, le MPS s'est doté d'un siège de renom et l'a également équipé d'un site web existant et d'une page Facebook. Euh, L'amélioration d'une gouvernance interne avec la production d'outils internes de travail. Il faut avouer qu'avant l'appui, avant l'arrivée de SIBF euh, au sein de notre organisation, en termes de, de partenaires techniques et financiers, vraiment, 
nous travaillons un peu comme, euh, je dirais, ça veut dire sans outils, sans rien. En fait, c'était presque du pilotage à deux. Mais grâce au soutien de SIF, nous sommes aujourd'hui euh, considérés comme la meilleure organisation de lutte anti-tabac dans notre pays. Et euh, cela va sans dire. Donc, euh, très rapidement et très brièvement, voilà, voilà euh, le travail constant, le travail permanent abattu par SIF dans notre pays, dans sa globalité, comme je l'ai dit au début, et particulièrement au sein de notre organisation. Donc, chapeau à SIF, félicitations à SIF, bonne continuité et joyeux anniversaire. Je vous remercie. Allô uh, thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fabien and the Mazoho Program Manager, Parsi MPS Gabon. Of course, uh, I would say tongue in cheek that my capacity uh, building, I probably may need to learn French in the near future. I can converse with a lot of our fellow African citizens around the continent. But uh, Mr. Fabian, thank you very much indeed for those inspiring words. Um, I'd now like to call upon um, Dr. Tepelayi Kabata, Technical Advisor to Director General Badia, to give us his testimonial. Um, Mr. Kabata, please, Dr. Kabata, please proceed. Well, uh, th th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Um, I I'm going to take the floor on behalf of uh, the Director General of uh, Badea, the Arab Development Bank uh, uh, in Africa. Um, your, His Excellency uh, Ken Afori Atta, Minister of Finance and uh, Chair of the Board of Governors of uh, ACBF. His Excellency Erastus Moncha, Chair of uh, the SCBF Executive Board, His Excellency Professor Emmanuel Mandozier, Executive Secretary of SCBF, Excellencies, Member of the Board of the Governors, distinguished guests, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Dr. Sidi, the Director General uh, of PADEA, is actually very delighted uh, to um, give this uh, message at uh, the 31st anniversary of uh, SCBF, uh, a celebration actually subjected to COVID constraint, uh, is actually very confident that SCBF has gone back at different metrics uh, from previous years uh, to measure success and to reflect on uh, means and ways to address persistent challenges and incorporate those experiences and lessons into the future. Uh, he would like to seize this opportunity to commend and honor the past African Union and the SCBF leadership for translating part of their views into this operational uh, institution on capacity development. development. Uh, His Excellency Ken Afori Atta, Minister of Finance of Ghana, His Excellency Erasmus Mwencha, His Excellency Professor Emmanuel Nandosier. Today, uh, SCBF is under your leadership, respectively as Chair of the Board of Governors, Chair of the Executive uh, Board and Secretary Executive, uh, Executive Secretary, sorry. Um, I would like to commend your leadership and commitment to keep higher the light of SCBF on the continent. On behalf of Badea and its partners from the Arab Coordination Group, I convey a happy anniversary to SCBF and to all its staff while wishing you all all the very best for the many years to come. Badea has supported SCBF for years and would like to reiterate its commitment to the economic development through investment and trade as underscore under our mission and specifically with our strategy by the 2030. Um, it, I should uh, underscore here that uh, Badea has erected capacity development as one of the cross cutting uh, uh, pillar. And to that extent, uh, Badea is uh, counting, banking on ACBF to deliver upon uh, that uh, uh, mission throughout this uh, uh, strategic, uh, strategic framework. 
So um, on behalf of the Director General, I would like to call up on all the other partners who are participating virtually at this celebration to support, uh, to join effort in supporting SEBF delivering on its mission for the advancement of the continent. Uh, on behalf of the Director General, I uh, thank you all for your kind attention. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Sepelai Kabata, Technical Advisor to the Director General Badia, uh, for those for that testimonial. Of course, on behalf of the Director General Badia, uh, Dr. Kabata, many thanks for your testimonial and submission today as we celebrate. ACBF's 30th anniversary commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. Before I move to our next speaker, I'd just like to read a few, uh, few comments that we received from uh, participants today as we celebrate the 30th anniversary of ACBF. Uh, Cameroon Policy Analysis and Research Center is one of the heritage sites of ACBF in capacity development in Cameroon. Congratulations to all who took part in this achievement. That's from Okuda Barnabe. This is a monumental achievement, not only for the ACBF, but for the whole of Africa. Congratulations on the 30th anniversary. Some or most of us from AFCOP, AFCOP, couldn't have learned and achieved without you. That's from Ledul Bosch. And uh, for my last one, uh, there's still more, but of course I'll read them later. But the last one now from Professor Mike I. Obadan from Nigeria. It is with pleasure that I wholeheartedly congratulate the ACBF on the occasion of its 30th anniversary. As a longtime associate of the ACBF, I know that in spite of the various challenges that it had to grapple, grapple with, the organization has very significant achievements to its credit, particularly in developing capacity of African countries for policy analysis and macroeconomic management. Its role in developing policy institutions, both with the executive arms of African governments and parliaments, is very visible and impactful. The foundation's knowledge products remain invaluable resources to policy institutions, research institutes, universities, among others. I hope African governments and development partners will continue to support the foundation to ensure its financial sustainability. Once again, I congratulate the ACBF for its resilience and achievement so far. Um, I would now like to thank you so much for those comments there, my Professor Obadan, and of course, Ledu Bosch and uh, Okada Barnabe. I'd now like to, um, to call upon Mr. Moses Zulu, I hope he's with us, Director Humana People to People HPP, and I believe uh, Mr. Zulu is based in Botswana. Um, Mr. Zulu, please go ahead if you're with us. Okay, we did have him, but while we try to get him back, as I said earlier, you did watch a short video um, of ACBF at 30. Um, ACBF achievements and impacts. And I'd now like to call upon um, Mr. Bakure Kone. Um, he is the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he is the Director of Strategic Planning, Partnerships and Resource Mobilization at ACBF. And he's, uh, he will now give us a presentation of ACBF achievements and impacts. Mr. Kone, please proceed. Um, thank you very much, moderator. Uh, after the uh, video, um, I will, with the permission of the audience, uh, move very quickly uh, on, the, on the PowerPoint presentation uh, of some of ACBF results over the past 30 years. Let me say on the onset that uh, I'm making this presentation on behalf of the Executive Secretary, uh, Professor Emmanuel Nandozi, uh, whom you've heard of uh, earlier. Experiencing difficulty moving the slides. Technical? Okay, thank you. So let's go uh, straight to uh, an overview of ACBF. Uh, the leading capacity development institution in Africa. Our role is to enable individuals and institutions to improve the life of Africans. I think the key words here is enable. This is where capacity is. Uh, ACBF 
is a strategic advisor for African countries. It has always been since its creation to the regional economic communities and institutions, uh, whether they are at country, regional, and uh, continental level on practical skills uh, that are needed for the continent's economic transformation. The African Union Specialized Agency for Capacity Development, ACBF was established on 9th of February, uh, 1991, 30 years ago, to set them. So the vision of ACBF is an Africa that is capable of achieving its own development. Um, and our mission is to build strategic partnerships, offer technical support, and provide access to relevant knowledge related to capacity development in Africa. We have a governance, uh, this is, uh, which is uh, uh, at three level. We have a board of governors, that is the highest decision-making organ of ACBF, an executive board in charge of the oversight and the secretariat uh, that is led by the executive secretary and manages the day-to-day -day activities of the foundation. So what do we do? We do skill development, institutional and organizational development. We administer funds when they are entrusted to us uh, by donors. We do project management. Uh, we offer technical assistance and advisory. And as I said, we produce and share knowledge and learning. Our membership is covering the most part of Africa. All the green countries that you see on this map are formal members of ACBF. I'll explain why I say formal. And the other ones are not formal members, yes. What we call formal members are those members that have done the administrative process, have gone through the administrative process of membership. But as a specialized agency of the African Union, ACBF actually can work in any African country. And it has demonstrated in the past that it works way beyond the confines of its member, member states. Now, um, ACBF over the past 30 years, we started with strengthening policy formulation and implementation. And um, our friend, uh, Ijni uh, Kaitesa from IPAR Rwanda uh, is, you know, the illustration of the think tanks that have supported ACBF from the very beginning. I'm sure Eugenia will say ACBF supported that, but it is a two-way direction process. Uh, without the work of our implementing partners, there's nothing we can say, and we hope to mobilize the necessary resources to support uh, our partners in, in, uh, in the other direction. So we started there, making better policies. And as we evolved, uh, it was expanded to many more areas. Uh, let me just list a few. Um, economic analysis and management, that's very close to the uh, initial uh, mandate, but also um, financial management and accountability, supporting statistics, supporting the work of parliament, uh, particularly the oversight role of parliament on the executive. So all this uh, came on board when it was made very clear that capacity goes beyond making policies. So it started with a, a funding cycle that were, uh, uh, included two phases, phase one, that's run from uh, 1991 to 1997, a phase two from 1998 to 2001, 
And then we got our first five year strategic plan, which we call the strategic medium term plan one, covering the period 2002 to 2006. The second strategic medium term plan covered the period 2007 to 2011. Sorry, unlike what is indicated on my uh, document, SMTP2 was from 2007 to 2011, SMTP3 from 2012 to 2016, and currently we are implementing our strategy that runs from 2017 to 2022. As you can see, this one is, a, is one year longer, and this is by decision of the Board of Governors. As I said, the highest level of decision-making of a CBM. The uh, main objective, the, the overall objective of the current strategy is uh, to promote the emergence of skilled people and strong, uh, uh, strong institutions that could transform Africa. As we evolve, uh, one uh, area has been our, our focus all this time. And in the, in the, in the coming months, uh, will we'll, we'll be even more emphasized. This is uh, the focus on implementation capacity. I, I think everyone in the audience will understand that a lot has been done in policy, good policies for the matter, but there is still a long way to go uh, in terms of implementation. Now, um, if we look at some of the milestones, um, well, I think the one you have uh, on the uh, top left is probably the most recent, uh, the designation of ACBF as the African Union Specialized Agency that was in 2017. Uh, but be, what led to that? I think that's the most important. What led to this decision by the African Union is indeed the successes that uh, ACBF had achieved over the years. So the African Union was the, of the opinion that such an important, important uh, uh, organization should be closer uh, to the continental uh, uh, organization. But before we get there, we had strengthened uh, national and regional parliaments to improve their accountability. We had trained uh, these figures you've seen before, 50,000, more than 50,000 uh, uh, public sector personnel, uh, most of whom are, are really uh, encumbering very important uh, positions in their various administration, whether it is ministries of finance, ministries of planning, or central banks. We have spearhead, the, spearheaded, sorry, and coordinated capacity development across Africa. Uh, well, this is a large investment in capacity development, but if you take the needs for capacity in Africa, this is kind of a drop in the ocean. So there's still a lot of effort to be made. We have created and nurtured a lot of think tanks. I think it's more than 40. Um, and most of them, a lot of them are with us today. And I want to thank them for their, uh, for their faith in SCBF and for their partnership. Um, a lot of senior university staff, uh, you know, our partnership with uh, universities in Africa covers more than 90 of them. And what we do in universities is really to upgrade uh, the teaching platform, uh, whether it's the capacity of the professors or the access of the student to uh, the knowledge that they need to perform in their studies. So libraries, et cetera, et cetera. We have enhanced knowledge and coordinated capacity uh, programs focusing on results with about 300 papers produced to date. So we produce papers in collaboration with all our partners to address the most important uh, uh, 
capacity areas on the continent. Okay. Sorry. Now, our current strategic uh, our current strategic plan has four pillars, uh, and a fifth one which is hidden. I will talk about it. The first pillar is really about enabling uh, the effective delivery of continental uh, development priorities. So you can immediately see the, our work with the African Union and the regional economic communities. The second pillar is to support countries to achieve tangible development results. We can have all the good policies if we don't deliver uh, uh, development result for the population. Uh, they don't understand exactly what capacity will mean in that case. So that's why it's important uh, to start showing results uh, of all the good policies we are putting in place and all the efforts of implementation we're making. Our third pillar uh, is an important one, is to get the non-state actors uh, to actually support sustainable development. Um, you can say the civil society uh, is very much on board for a long time in terms of monitoring and sometimes in terms of participating in the policy making. For the private sector, it has to go beyond uh, what they call, uh, you know, the, those uh, small, small amounts uh, that, that they put in gift every year. It has to be more than that. It has to be uh, uh, the private sector has to understand that development is profitable. So that is important. That needs capacity uh, for understanding that investing in development can be profitable. Our fourth pillar is knowledge, uh, production and, not, and, and usage. It is um, through research, through uh, this kind of consultations with all of you here that we generate knowledge that we in turn share with others uh, to inform the development process. So I've said a lot about each of the pillars uh, in the previous slide, so you allow me to, <laughs> to go very quickly on this. So on this one, we do, on the pillar one, uh, we've done skills development. We have supported uh, uh, economics, public policy, public sector management, et cetera. We have also supported implementation and we continue uh, of the CFTA uh, through the African think tank networks and other initiatives uh, that are ongoing. Uh, we've supported the development of uh, actually the implementation, the development first, but also the implementation of Agenda 2063 uh, and we currently participate actively in the monitoring of its implementation. On the pillar two, an example includes the launch of Gambia's capacity development strategy. Uh, it is uh, a, a strategy that uh, actually uh, uh, outlines uh, what is needed in terms of capacity to implement uh, Zambia's uh, development plan. Uh, we do that in many, many other countries. So Gambia is a very good example, but there are others. We support implementation of the national tobacco control programs. Uh, as you know, in um, partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, since 2014, ACBF has been very active uh, in advancing evidence-based tobacco control policies in Africa. Um, I, I take advantage of that to say that ACBF and our partner, the uh, Center for Tobacco Control in Africa uh, will be co-organizing from 26 to 28, the first Africa Tobacco Control Conference, and you are all welcome. We have enhanced the farmer's productivity and access to market. That is important. Uh, the time that uh, you can just produce and expect that people will come to buy is over. This is a digital time. You need to know, you need to get your production known and 
provide, promote access to it. We have provided support to con uh, conflict and crisis affected countries. This, is, this has been uh, in the DNA of ACBF from the very beginning. Uh, uh, ACBF used to be called the organization that goes where no one else want to go. On the pillar three, we have strengthened the uh, center of ticks and tick bones diseases, uh, a center that is based in Malawi and belong uh, to the uh, network of the African Union. Uh, we've built the capacity needed uh, for Agenda 2063 in terms of um, monitoring and evaluation of everything that is being done uh, to implement this strategy, but not only that. Uh, we've supported the AU uh, with advice uh, in, on financial capacity management, um, financial capacity and management, as well as collaborations in various areas. Our partners, uh, whether it is the Economic Commission for Africa, the African Development Bank, Afrexim Bank, and others, uh, have been very active with us uh, in addressing uh, our capacity building for Agenda 2063. Empowering women uh, in agriculture, and soon empowering women and youth in agriculture uh, with the support of BADEA, you heard Dr. Kabata earlier, uh, is a, a very important area to us. And I'm pleased to say that uh, uh, BADEA has been able uh, to also bring on board uh, this program, our partner, the Islamic Development Bank, and this is something we're very, very pleased with. On the pillar four, we've raised the standards of public finance management for accountability, and inclusive growth. Um, our, the 2020 African Integration Report, uh, an African uh, Commission uh, publication, uh, is something you, we collaborated with. Uh, we also collaborated in producing uh, the Africa, uh, Africa's Development Dynamics for 2020. Uh, this is uh, uh, a publication by, by the African Union looking at the states uh, of economic affairs in Africa. Um, we've been able to improve uh, the coordination of knowledge networks, and we hope to be able to do more of it. Uh, we have every year uh, a think tank summit, which is important to us uh, to, to keep uh, our think tank engaged and committed in resolving Africa's capacity challenge. And one thing we are, uh, we, we started in 2015 and are now hearing to do much more in is domestic resource mobilization. Africa has beautiful agendas, the last of which is probably the African uh, continental free, free trade area. But it will be a lie to consider that we can carry this kind of big agenda only counting on ex external funding. That's not possible which is why we're bringing domestic resource mobilization back uh, uh, in, the, in the core of our activities so that uh, we can help countries not only to find ways uh, to expand uh, the taxation uh, uh, um, uh, platform, but also to build transparency into the whole taxation thing so that citizens that are contributing can know where their money is going. So the more they know where the money is going, the more they will contribute. So this is uh, something that is coming back, uh, as I said, at the heart of our activities uh, for, the, for now and the next years to come. Now, this is the hidden pillar of our strategy. It is about the institution itself. What we do here is uh, to kind of promote ACBF as the go-to place for capacity development. So if you have uh, any capacity development challenge, you talk to ACBF, we have very capable partnerships, we have very capable staff, and 
we can help you resolve it. So the, um, that reflects us always going or looking outside to resolve issues. Um, well, it's no longer justified. We have all the competencies and experiences on the continent. Uh, as long as we want, we work as partners uh, uh, to resolve the issues. So this is uh, uh, the, the pillar that takes care, uh, that's the inward looking uh, pillar of our strategy. Now looking ahead, guided by uh, the current strategy and our long-term strategic vision, uh, which some of you helped us develop, uh, ACBI will prioritize the capacity dimension in the following areas. We will foster a COVID-19 response, response and post-COVID-19 recovery and resilience. Um, well, I don't think a lot has been said about the pandemic, uh, but it is how we respond uh, to the post-pandemic era that will determine the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the state, the trend of Africa's development going forward. I think that is, that is important. Uh, it's important that we collectively reflect on what are the capacities to be built uh, to build back better, uh, as the UNDP will say. We will be supporting uh, the acceleration of the CFTA, actually acceleration of the implementation of the CFTA and regional integration. You know, it has already been said that our markets taken individually are too small uh, to achieve sustainable development. And this is where regional integration plays a key role. And the CFTA uh, is one fantastic tool for this regional integration. Uh, but there are capacity uh, issues that need to be addressed for every country to make the most of the CFTA. There should not be winners and losers in the CFTA process. Otherwise, it is the whole process that will fail. So we'll be promoting sustainable development, um, supporting digitalization to accelerate Africa's development. Well, I think COVID-19 has showed us that digitalization is no longer an option. Uh, if you cannot move from your home, uh, you still need to work uh, to make things happen. So digitalization has become an, um, an urgency for Africa. And it's good that most of the development partners have integrated that in their, in their future plans. So I thank you very much uh, for listening. There is still a lot ahead of us. And with your partnership, uh, maybe we will be here 30 years down the line. I'm not sure for me uh, to discuss uh, what uh, are some of the things we'll do next. Thank you. Um, Dr. Vakule Kone, Director of Strategic Planning Partnerships and uh, Resource Mobilization ACBF. Thank you so much for explaining exactly what ACBF is, what they're working on, the successes and achievements that they've had, and also their future plans in terms of the strategy which of course is driven um, by the uh, Board of Governors of ACBF, chaired of course by His Excellency Ken Ofori Atta, Minister of Finance in the Republic of Ghana. Um, I just want to, um, before we move on to, 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 the next, to the next segment, which I, I got very excited about, uh, which is uh, the ACBF Media Awards, so hang on. Um, I just wanted to read a few more messages and, and just um, highlight something else. All organizations, of course, today were celebrating ACBF's 30th anniversary, all organizations always have members that help build it to get to where we are today. And one of those I did read out a message from is Dr. Franny Lotier, who sent a congratulatory message. Um, Dr. Lotier was uh, executive secretary of ACBF from July 2009 to November 2013. So uh, Dr. Lotier, and of course, I don't have the other executive secretaries before her, before uh, Dr. Lotier. However, I think that a big shout out and a big congratulations goes to all of them and all the staff that have worked for ACBF over the last 30 years in terms of making the organization a success 
and building it up to the level it's in now to build it better going forward and do more and more successful projects with all the countries and members of ACBF in Africa. So congratulations to all of you. Um, I'd like to read um, um, uh, another message. Congratulations, ACBF and team, and happy 30th anniversary. We at ILA Kenya are very grateful for the partnership and support from ACBF in institutional capacity strengthening, as well as supporting national and subnational capacity on tobacco control policies and legislation in Kenya. That's Celine Awoya, so if I pronounce the wrong apologies, Ila Kenya. And congratulations to ACBF from Debazu Yantio, an economic policy management scholarship recipient who's now at AFDB. Debazu, thank you so much for that, uh, for that uh, congratulatory message. Again, as I said earlier, there are lots of messages that are in French, and I won't, I won't unfortunately try to say them because my French is terrible. However, Thank you so much for all your messages. Um, I think that the, the sentiment is accepted and understood by uh, ACBF. And of course, I can see from all the messages, it's about keeping up the important work going forward. Now then we come to, um, as I said, I'm a member of the media, of course. I work at Zim Papers TV Network as the head of business and one of their anchors. So the next, uh, the next segment is, is, uh, is very special to me because it's an inaugural event. And it's the ACBF Media Awards on Capacity Development. And I now ask Ms. Grace Kaimila Kanjo, Director of Finance Administration, ACBF, possibly to explain the rewards and hopefully announce the recipients. Um, Mrs. Kaimila Kanjo, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Master of uh, Ceremonies, distinguished members of the Board of Governors of ACBF, uh, distinguished members of the ACBF Executive Board, distinguished ladies and gentlemen here in present, on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of ACBF, we are pleased to launch the SCBF Media Awards. The SCBF Media Awards are a new initiative of SCBF uh, on the occasion of our 30th anniversary. And they have the specific objective of recognizing excellence in journalism and paying particular attention to the role that journalism and journalists play in promoting capacity development on the African continent through covering issues on capacity development. The awards will run under the theme, an Africa capable of achieving its own development. And the competition will be uh, launched periodically and will be announced under the various categories to honor journalists in television, radio, print, photojournalism, and other genres of uh, journalism. So, we will be announcing the competitions through our website and, and, and our other media that are associated with us. And uh, they will be open for journalists to compete under the various uh, categories. For today, on the occasion of our 30th anniversary, we are not only launching this award or these awards, but we are also recognizing a, a journalist that has played a very big role in giving publicity to capacity development issues on the continent and to publicity of ACBF activities in particular. Early this month, we launched um, the competition. 
which uh, was open to journalists to enter. And these are journalists who have reported faithfully on the foundation's activities in the last 30 years. We had an adjudication committee that looked at all the submissions that we received and the uh, adjudication committee came up with a winner. The winning article will be shared in the post, the post uh, celebration newsletter that we are going to produce. It will also be shared on our website so that uh, everyone can, can see it. We thank all the entrants to the competition. The entries were all very, very good entries, but at the end, there had to be one winner. And it is my privilege and pleasure to announce the winner of the ACBF Media Awards on the occasion of our 30th anniversary celebrations. And the winner is Mr. Bafo Ankoma. Thank you very much, Mr. Bafo Ankoma, for your support <laughs> to the ACBF for always diligently playing a part in the publicity of ACPF and for supporting a lot of our media events at ACPF, including contributing to a number of uh, ACPF pub publications. We appreciate your role in journalism on the African continent, and we also appreciate your role to ACPF. Congratulations once again. And to everyone, please be on the lookout for next announcements on the media awards. And uh, we will be um, putting them on the website and on other media outlets, including our social media platforms. Uh, let me indicate that uh, the award is a cash award. So we will be sending uh, Mr. Bafo Ankoma, um, 500 US dollars to his account as a prize for this award. Thank you very much and congratulations once again, Mr. Bafo Ankoma. Thank you. Uh, th well, that just put a great smile on my face. Uh, inaugural winner of the ACBF Media Awards, Mr. Buffo and Koma, congratulations. Uh, keep up the good work in promoting uh, capacity development and also, of course, promoting ACBF's uh, programs around Africa. Congratulations again. Well done. And of course, Ms. Grace Camila Kanjo, Director of Financial Administration, ACBF, many thanks for that. And I hope this will now become, I assume, uh, an annual award with a bit of luck. And uh, so, all you journalists out there, there'll be various categories. So please get involved and uh, promote and report on uh, the capacity building in Africa. Because of course today we're celebrating 30th anniversary of ACBF, commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. And it's a great day. And it's a day as, um, as His Excellency, um, His Excellency uh, Ken Ofori Atta said earlier, he said that it's a, it's a, it's a look at our achievements look at int introspect ourselves and also understand what we are going to do to go forward. Now, I did say, of course, that one of my capacity building needs is to read French, and there are many messages that are coming through. So I thought that I would sort of cheat. I would call upon uh, Barosu Jawara, who's um, from ACBF, to help me now. And maybe, uh, Barosu, if you could possibly read out some of the uh, comments that have been posted in the Zoom um, in French, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Andy. Uh, this is Barasu Jawara from ACBF. Uh, je vais lire juste, juste quelques messages uh, que nous avons sur la fenêtre des commentaires. Uh, nos amis de l'AFCOP nous disent joyeux anniversaire à la CBF et merci pour tout le travail que vous avez fait uh, pour les nations africaines, surtout en matière de renforcement des capacités. 
donc je suis l'un des fruits. Euh, équipe de euh, management, joyeux anniversaire à nous tous et bonne continuation. Il euh, y a Madame Joël Billet également euh, qui a dit au nom du bureau de l'Assemblée générale de l'AFOP, je suis fier de participer à cette célébration de l'ACBF et vous réitère mes félicitations pour ces 30 ans d'engagement. Il euh, y a plein de messages venant du Gabon au nom de Tanguizue Obam, président du MPS Gabon. Je viens adresser nos sincères félicitations euh, et un joyeux anniversaire à l'ACBF pour ses 30 ans de travail dans le cadre du renforcement des capacités de nos États et au sein de nos organisations impliquées dans la lutte anti-tabac. C'est un message qui vient de Fabien. Euh, un autre message euh, que je vais lire est je vais probablement terminer avec, qui vient de Mbadou Crispin, euh, qui dit que pour le ministère du plan euh, de la République démocratique du Congo, l'apport de l'ACBF dans le renforcement des capacités en Afrique en général et particulièrement dans nos États est considérable au cours des 30 dernières années. Toutes nos félicitations, toutes nos sincères félicitations, nous venons désormais nous inscrire dans la consolidation et la pérennisation des différents acquis en orientant l'action euh, dans le renforcement des capacités de résilience de nos économies et institutions face, face aux chocs liés aux crises et aux pandémies. Uh, MC, I think I will stop there. There are quite a number of them. Uh, je vous remercie beaucoup. Thank you, of course, <clears throat> Dr. Barasu Jawara, Senior Knowledge Management Expert at uh, a ACBF. Thank you for that. And uh, just, just a quick acknowledgement. There's a lot of, um, obviously, guests, uh, think tanks, civil society organizations, but I'd just like to acknowledge a few people who are also giving us actually messages. Mohamed Hadi Nyags, Director of Research from the Parliament of Ghana. He offers congratulations. Mm -hmm. And we've got Abu Eli Biliku, Assistant Commissioner, Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives in the Republic of, of Uganda. Nice being part of the 30th anniversary, his message reads. And um, I've got Kawadi Serafin, Advisor, Minister of Finance, Cote d'Ivoire. Happy to join and, and congratulations. And uh, Ramadani Hangwa, Program Analyst, Population and Development, United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA. Tanzania, um, also part of our celebration today, because of course today um, we are obviously celebrating ACBF 30th anniversary. Also, uh, Mamo Malik Jangne from the Gambia. I'm a member of the executive board. Uh, Mr. Jangne from the Gambia, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for being with us, of course, not just at ACBF over the last, over the years, but also with us today. Now then, um, I would, uh, I would now like to call back, in fact, Mr. Bakiri Kone, the Director of Strategic Planning, Partnerships and Resource Mobilization, ACBF, because he is now going to announce the launch of an ACBF new initiative. I won't say what it is. I'll leave that to Mr. Kone. Mr. Kone, back to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Indy. Um, I was here uh, trying to uh, kind of respond to your need for capacity building in French. So I had envisaged to uh, make the next presentation in French. Uh, and I discovered that, um, you know, some of the, uh, uh, some of the terms in my presentation are beyond my interpretation capacity. So I will proceed in English. <laughs> uh, the initiative I'm pleased to announce, and I'm trying to share uh, a, a presentation in just two or three slides, uh, but apparently I can't. Uh, can you see it? Hello, can you, can you see the presentation? Yes, I can. Yes, we can, please ah. go ahead. Thank you. Uh, this is about, the ACBF Alumni Network. Okay, let's be clear from the onset. Uh, alumni associations are normally uh, with universities and schools, you know, group of former students that have the goal of fostering a lasting connection uh, with one alma mater 
as well as promoting the welfare uh, of the college alumni. But in the case of ACBF, the main purpose of the ACBF alumni network is to catalyze the support of former beneficiaries of ACBF in raising the profile of ACBF in any way they can. And some of the ways they can do it is, uh, sorry, to provide advice uh, for the planning, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of ACBF programs, whether it is uh, our operations, our knowledge, and learning, or uh, any other aspect of our activities. Positioning and advocating for the selection of ACBF uh, for development, uh, for capacity development and implementation, uh, actually development and implementation of capacity development programs and projects at continental, regional, and country level. Supporting ACBF's governance organs, whether it is the Board of Governors, Executive Board, or the Secretariat, in mobilizing resources to address capacity development challenges on the continent, and serving as resource person for events organized by ACBF. Some of these things are already done. Uh, we're just trying to promote it further, uh, promote them further. So who can join the network? Any individual, organization, or institution that has benefited from ACBF services, that include funding, uh, skills development, institutional strengthening, or even participation in our knowledge activities. It also includes former staff, former staff and consultant of ACBF, former members of the uh, ACBF executive board, former executive secretaries of ACBF. Um, how will, op will the uh, network operate? These are proposals for the moment because we trust uh, that um, when the network will be uh, set up, uh, there will be a lot more uh, proposal on the table by the members. But for now, we propose that the alumni uh, network, not association, sorry, uh, will meet once a year, for example, on a margin of the annual meetings of ACBF, that the association will have a bureau uh, made of a chairperson, two vice chairperson, that the uh, network uh, uh, can create as many committees as it deems necessary to support his activities, that the chair will be elected by the members, and uh, or each terms of offices, or office will be defined by the members at their first meeting. Uh, most importantly, that the service of the bureau and members of the network uh, will not be remunerated. Uh, this is the whole spirit of a, an alumni uh, uh, a network or association. So this is what we have at the moment. So. Mr. Moderator, let me just end that by calling on all our partners participating here and through them to all those who could not be with us today uh, to join this network. Uh, it is uh, part of the, our collective effort uh, to build the ACBF of tomorrow, the ACBF that will take all of us uh, to the next 30 years. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bakuikone. Merci beaucoup. Is that, uh, that's, that's good. Director of Strategic Planning Partnerships and Resource Mobilization, ACBF. So, of course, uh, I hope I said that right. But, of course, the that alumni... Is, that is a very good beginning. It's a very good beginning. Thank you. So, at least the uh, 30th anniversary, Andy Hodges said a bit of capacity building. Thank you, Mr. Kone. So, of course, join the alumni network, get involved. In, uh, in where ACPF is going, um, all of you out there, and I think I'm sure more details will be, uh, will be put on the ACPF website and other media platforms. Of course, today we're celebrating ACPF's 30th anniversary, commemorating 30 years of capacity building in Africa. Um, I thought um, before we, there, there is a few more, um, a few more comments I can, I can give. Um, we've got here, uh, 
Congratulations, ACBF. Happy 30th anniversary and many more returns. ACBF's assistance has helped elevate the African Tobacco Control Alliance's position as a lead tobacco control civil society alliance in the region. Your support embraces the alliance to effectively, to effectively, uh, where am I? Uh, to, to provide technical assistance to 12 countries where tobacco industry interference stores implementation of the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, FCTC. Thanks to ACPF support, ATCA has been able to build the capacity of its staff from various aspects, enabling the Alliance to in turn effectively build the capacity, the capacity um, of the country. So congratulations, that's a congratulating message. And of course, um, have hearty congratulations on ACBF's 30th anniversary. Commendable milestones have been notched up all over the world for going from strength to strength. That's G1 Ram Nugun. Congratulations, ACBF, for all your far reaching and meaningful impacts in the lives of our people and capacities of institutions from HESPI in the Horn of Africa. That's from Daniel Van Teer. So thank you so much for your messages. Time to read them out. Because uh, like all good things, like all good celebrations, they always unfortunately start to come to an end. But before we do that, of course, I would like to... Yeah, I think we I think we've lost our our moderator. I'm not sure what what is happening. Uh, maybe uh, IT people can assist uh, with that. And uh, you know, well, while we wait, maybe uh, Barasi, you can read some more um, messages in French. For the benefit of the audience. Okay, please. Professor, I think we're back. We must have had a, a minute. Okay, all right. But yes, please, I mean, I think let's let's read some more. Yes, please, um, if you'd like, Mr. Kony. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, uh, let me read some more uh, messages in in, in French. Uh, uh, Félicitations à l'ACBF pour l'identification des nouveaux challenges uh, en lien avec l'accompagnement dans l'opération de la ZELECAF à la lutte contre la pandémie de la COVID-19 et la cassure de la fracture numérique uh, en appuyant les efforts pour combler le fossé du développement du numérique en Afrique. Uh, C'est un message qui, qui vient de M. jean Serge Bicoro, qui est le uh, coordonnateur national par intérim du Sénarac en République démocratique du, du Congo. Euh, oui, euh, également en République démocratique du Congo, nous avons un autre message. Je suis un des boursiers de la CBF en tant que cadre africain. Grâce au financement de l'ACBF et de la Banque mondiale, nombreux comme moi ont acquis l'expertise nécessaire de haute facture dans le domaine de l'analyse et de la gestion de la politique économique, en obtenant après une formation dans le cadre du programme GPE, euh, que les Anglais disent IPM, un diplôme de troisième cycle en gestion de la politique économique. Cette expertise a permis de faire avancer le continent dans la conception et la formulation des politiques économiques efficaces et de qualité en Afrique. Nous félicitons la CBF et souhaitons que cela se poursuive au cours des prochaines années. Euh, C'est encore M. Jean-Serge Bicoro, euh, qui est le coordonnateur par intérim du Sénarec en République démocratique du Congo. Euh, un autre message de Deo Nakubana qui est le directeur exécutif de l'IDEC au Burundi, qui dit « Bonjour tout le monde, je me joins à tous ceux qui l'ont fait avant moi pour féliciter la CBF et particulièrement son secrétaire exécutif à l'occasion de son 30e anniversaire. Le renforcement des capacités est, on ne le dira jamais assez, l'avenir du monde, pour ne pas dire l'avenir du continent, mais l'avenir du monde. 
euh, Michel Sanoussi également, euh, qui dit que pourrions-nous avoir accès aux documents présentés au cours de cette cérémonie euh, et, euh, du 30e anniversaire de l'ACBF, là, c'est une requête, euh, juste pour dire que, en fait, les présentations étaient très euh, enrichissantes. Donc, euh, on va vous faire parvenir les, les présentations. Merci. Uh, MC, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Barsu Jawara. Thank you for that. Um, an interesting uh, comment came up immediately after Mr. Kone's launching of the Aluna Network. This is from Umo Ba. He says, uh, we'll see, thank you for launching the Aluna Network. This is potentially a very powerful instrument. I have a suggestion, uh, he continues, have country platforms as well. Anyway, at least immediately upon the launch of the Aluna Network, there's some positive feedback coming in, of course. And that was today, upon top of that, Alumni Network launched, of course, the inaugural ACBF Media Awards on capacity, um, uh, on capacity development, which, of course, uh, was won by uh, Mr. Bafo and Kom. And Koma, thank you so much for that, and congratulations. Now then, as I said, uh, all, all, before we cut off, all good things come to an end. And, of course, today is a good thing. Today is a great day celebration of ACBF's 30th anniversary. And of course, this is just today because tomorrow we will be continuing on exactly the same link. We start at 10 a.m. Central African time. We will be holding an e-seminar on post-COVID-19 recovery in Africa, challenges, lessons, and capacity development priorities. And of course, we've lined up distinguished panel of moderators and speakers. So please make sure you log on tomorrow, the 21st of October, starting at 10 a.m. Central African time, and you can use the same link as you did today. So uh, now then, if I can call on Ms. Grace Carmila Kanjo, Director of Finance Administration at ACBF, to give us some closing remarks. Yeah, Andy, Andy can I just come in here? I see that there was somebody who raised their hand, uh, Lucy Okwanachi. Uh, if, uh, if, if, if she wants to say something, maybe she could. Yes, of uh, course. Uh, yes. Of course. Before, but, uh, before, uh, before, before Ms. Um, um, Camilla Kanji comes in. Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, Lucy, are you, are you still with us? Yes, yes. It's Lucy of Konachi. Um, that's a mix up. It's Mr. Audio Friday. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, uh, Friday, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Friday, we can yes, hear sir. you. Yeah. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, the Honorable Minister is unavoidably absent. And uh, she has asked me to convey her remarks to the ACBF. Hello. OK. All right. So um, I want to read her remark as it is. OK. Remarks of the Honorable Minister of finance, budget, and national planning at the 30th anniversary celebration of the African Capacity Building Foundation. I wish to warmly use this opportunity to commend the assiduous job of, the, of my colleague and brother, the chair of the Board of Governors, ACBF, Honorable Ken Ophoria. Congratulate all the members of the Board of Governors, the Executive Board, and my own brother and compatriot, Executive Secretary, Professor Nadozian. So the Federal Republic of Nigeria, along with 12 other African countries, collaborated with bilateral and multilateral partners to establish the African Capacity Building Foundation on 9 February 1991. Since then, the partnership between the foundation and the federal government of Nigeria has grown from strength to strength. The country is represented by the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning at the ACBF Board of Governors. Nigeria has been supporting the foundation from inception. The country has, over the years, being the lead African contributor to ACBF, and to date has made a cumulative contribution of $12.150 million, 
with the support of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, SDF has been able to leverage resources from the international community to support capacity development across Africa and to achieve significant results in support of the continent's development process. Notably, SCBF has been catalyzing change in Nigeria by investing in capacity development initiatives in the public and private sectors and civil society organizations, providing technical assistance and implementation of capacity development interventions and generating, managing and sharing knowledge on best practices in capacity building and development management. The foundation has contributed in strengthening public private partnership in producing a highly skilled public sector economists and managers, strengthened institutions Uh, sorry, are you still are you still there? Okay, well, uh, well, thank you. I mean, unfortunately, you got cut off, but thank you so much for those kind words um, of congratulations. Of course, but today we're celebrating uh, ACBF's thirtieth anniversary, uh, commemorating thirty years of capacity building in Africa. Um, we still have a bit of time. I, I, I take uh, Professor Ngozi's comments there. Um, it's interesting. Uh, some questions, Professor, if you'd like to. There's, there's, a, there's a good question there that came through if it was answered. Um, I don't think it's been answered. Um, how do we, I saw it just now, I really liked it. It's about how to build capacity. Capacity. Um, how do we ensure that there are institutional, social, and economic capacities of systems to support the net benefits realized from the ACBF in interventions. Uh, Professor, I'm not sure if you want to take that. I know, I know we're moving away slightly, but I thought it was quite a good question. Professor? Andy, could, could you repeat the question? Because I didn't get it fully and I, I couldn't, I couldn't how, do we, how, do, how do we ensure that there are institutional, social and economic capacities of systems to support the net benefits realized from the ACBF in interventions? Uh, okay, if I understand correctly, it's uh, more like how do you uh, ensure that you um, that that will build the capacity that will be beneficial or that will address the real needs, whether they are institutional or social, uh, of uh, either organizations or nations. Uh, that's precisely what ACBF does. Uh, we have a, a very systematic way of building capacity. First of all, we believe that capacity is a, you know something you address in a holistic manner. Uh, because if you train people and they don't have equipment to work with, or they don't have the institutional framework that will allow them to, to operate, then uh, they are not going to perform. Uh, and if you, do, so when we're strengthening human capacity, we're also thinking about strengthening institutional capacity to underpin the performance of the individuals whose capacity has been built. Uh, but we also keep an eye on the fact that capacity is not something that uh, it's uh, one, one, one workshop you can tell you have built capacity. Uh, it's, uh, that's why we look at it as a more longer or medium term activity. Uh, so our programs are usually multi-year programs because we believe we take that time. But at the same time, we build in, especially from the point of view of human capacity, from the get-go, from the onset, we only don't think about building capacity, but we also think about uh, retaining the capacity. So capacity retention becomes and utilization becomes very important and it's not, it shouldn't be an afterthought. It is something you do upfront from the get-go. Uh, make you know, the strategies and put plans in place to ensure that that happens. And then you also think about sustainability of the, of the capacity development interventions that, that has taken place. For example, the reason why we're talking about these things uh, that ACDF either created or supported is that it will find a way to ensure that if HBF is no longer able to provide funding or support for them, that they will still be able to function and, and stay and continue the job, the job they're doing. So I hope I've been able to, in this very brief intervention, uh, respond to the, the very, very important question that was asked. But I can see that Mr. Friday is back online. So 
uh, and you may want to give him the floor again. Oh, thank you. Of course, thank you. That was Abdul Muwanika who asked that question, Professor. Thank you for that. Uh, Friday, I, I understand you're back. Maybe you'd like to finish your submission. Friday, can you hear us? Yes, I'm, I'm back. I'm back. Yes, yes I'm please, back. if you want to finish your, 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 you want to finish your submission, please go ahead. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Uh, the foundation's investment in Nigeria today is about 31 million US dollars in grants. This includes national and regional projects and programs. ACBF has supported human and institutional development in the country. The foundation has funded national programs in Nigeria to the tune of 12 million US dollars. This has gone to key national institutions such as the National Center for Economic Management and Administration, Development Policy Center, Policy Analysis and Research Project, National Institute for Legal Studies, to mention a few. So the foundation has, over the years, trained the staff of the Federal Ministry of Finance over a hundred staff have been trained in computer, in trade negotiation, in um, management. So the foundation has also invested about 18.99 million US dollars on regional projects and projects in Nigeria. In so from which institutions like ECOWAS, institutions like ECOWAS and West African like Institute for Western Economic Institute Financial Institute Management Institute have Financial benefited immensely. Benefited immensely. The true white firm, the ACBF, has founded the training of numerous Nigerians and other West African personnel in the economic sector. With the support of ACBL, the aforementioned national and regional institutes have become more valuable and are playing significant roles in the economy of their various countries. It is our desire uh, that the ACBF in the years to come we grow stronger and stronger, producing workers who will be productive in their respective economies. Thank you very much. Once again, I thank the, the governor. I thank the chairman of the board of governors, the chairman of the executive board, and my brother. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Friday, Olionia, thank you so much for those uh, inspirational and congratulatory messages, of course, because today we are celebrating ACBF's 30th anniversary. But I think on that note, uh, unfortunately, we have to come to a close. But let me first, before we do that, of course, let me first call on, uh, on Ms. Grace Kaimila Kanjo, Director of Finance and Administration at ACBF, to give us some closing remarks. Uh, Ms. Kaimila Kanjo. Again, uh, oh, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, Prof. Did you want to? Uh, did you want to? Uh... No, I just want to make sure there's no other hand that is raised because somehow we're not seeing the whole thing. That's that's why I don't want anybody to go away feeling that we they wanted to intervene and we didn't give them the opportunity to, to do so. You know, yeah. But I, I don't know whether. Uh, I think we've covered most of them. I think some of the answers have already been answered on, on the chat. Okay, all right. Okay, please proceed then. Okay. Thank you, yes. Thank you Professor Nandosi. Um, okay, Ms. Grace Camila Kanjo, your closing remarks. Oh, hang on. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. yeah thank Kanjo. you very much, uh, uh, Master of Ceremonies. Distinguished members of the uh, SCBF Board of Governors. Uh, the SCBF Executive Board, representatives of development partners, our implementing and collaborating partners, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. We have come to the
the end of a very productive anniversary celebration session today. And it is an honor and privilege for me to be entrusted with such an undertaking of closing a gathering of such eminent people coming from different parts of the world who are all uh, overjoyed to be celebrating with ACBF on the occasion of our 30th anniversary. We are truly honored to have all of you here today. And we don't take it for granted that you could leave your otherwise very busy schedules to come and be with us today. We also are gratified by your continued commitment to working with us in the enterprise of capacity development on the African continent. This includes our development partners, our cooperating partners, implementing partners, beneficiaries of the various ACBF programs through the years, and all well-wishers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us to celebrate this big milestone. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, anyone who follows, uh, who has been following the rich tapestry of the discussions that we've had today and all the testimonials that we have heard will witness the important role of capacity development on the African continent in terms of addressing Africa's development challenges. And indeed, everybody has indicated how capacity development is at the heart of uh, propelling Africa into the future and solving and addressing the development challenges that the continent faces. You will all agree with me that SCBF has done a lot over the years as uh, indicated in the testimonials, but we also heard from the testimonials that much still remains to be done. And so allow me to emphasize on three key messages that I think we should consider as the key takeaways from today. Number one, we've stressed the need for renewed, improved, and sustained commitment to capacity building in Africa, as well as the identification of the capacities required for Africa's socioeconomic transformation. And further, there was a strong message on the need to develop synergies through effective coordination of capacity building efforts in Africa and sharing of experiences and best practices, realizing that lack of investment in capacity development will inhibit the continent's attainment of its vision uh, as um, stipulated in uh, the continent's uh, agenda 2063 and the global sustainable development goals, the SDGs. More importantly, ladies and gentlemen, the call made by governments, development partners and all stakeholders for SCBF to coordinate capacity development interventions on the continent at all levels and across different disciplines and stakeholders is an opportunity for us to continue building capacities as we transform African economies. Last but not least, there was a message on the need for SCBF to be supported, to be able to do more. The foundation will need predictable, sustainable, and adequate long-term financing to ensure that human and institutional capacities are built for Africa's sustainable development. We have listened very carefully and attentively 
and we are very happy that these issues really resonate well with what is lined up in our ongoing work and future strategic plans, which uh, coincidentally, we will be developing our new strategic plan uh, in the coming few months. Your insightful, inspirational, and motivational remarks have given us even more resolve and impact, impetus to forge ahead in our work. We are encouraged and truly energized by your support and remarks. So we pledge that we will continue to work very diligently for the uh, good of the African continent. And Ladies and gentlemen, once again, on behalf of the Executive Secretary of ACBF, on behalf of uh, my fellow staff, on behalf of our Board of Governors and the Executive Board, I really, really thank you for the invaluable contributions that you have all made in this session today and for celebrating with us on this milestone. And let me just uh, end by reminding us that uh, the celebration continue. And tomorrow, there is uh, a, an e-seminar on post-COVID-19 recovery in Africa, which uh, is um, entitled Post-COVID-19 Recovery in Africa, Challenges, Lessons, and capacity development. This is one of the ways that uh, ACBF is on the cutting edge of uh, contemporary issues that are confronting the continent and finding solutions to them. You are all invited to join these discussions tomorrow. Thank you very much for your valuable contributions and for your attention. Thank you, um, Ms. Grace Kamila Kanjo, Director of Finance Administration at ACBF. Thank you so much for those closing remarks. Well, um, we've come to the end of this uh, ACBF 30th anniversary. I think on behalf of everybody who attended, I think all I can say to ACBF is congratulations. Makuro Koto, as we say in Zimbabwe, and uh, I, hope, uh, I hope I knew the French word for congratulations, but uh, it's been a well, well worth celebration today. And as uh, Professor Nandosi, Executive Secretary said, we're looking forward to 30 years more of ACBF building capacity in Africa. I think uh, before I close, of course, just to remind you, as uh, Ms. Uh, Camila Kanjo said, tomorrow morning, log in using the same link, 10 a.m., that's Thursday, the 21st of October, 10 a.m. Central African time, same link as we have an e-seminar to, to, to round up, if I can say it, these celebrations. I think I can only end where there was so much spoken today that was motivational, that was inspiring, that really made us think about what ACBF has done, what ACBF is doing, and what ACBF is going to do. Also, some of the, to the comments coming from all over Africa in terms of supporting and thanking ACBF for their efforts in capacitating all these different institutions. It really is heartwarming. And I think on behalf of ACBF, thank you so much for your support. So I can only end on one statement which really struck my mind. And that, of course, was from uh, Professor Lee Huff from Afrexim Bank, Dr. Christiane Abu Liha from Afrexim Bank. She called on all partners to continue supporting ACBF, but this is the part I really liked. She said, ACBF is an entity we can trust. Well, that's it from me this afternoon. I'm Andy Hodges, goodbye, I'll see you tomorrow, and please, you will be safe. Thank you, Andy, thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.